Jurassic Park – The game is an episodic graphic adventure video game based on the 1993 film Jurassic Park and released for the PlayStation 3 Macintosh, Microsoft Windows, and Xbox 360. The game was developed and published by Telltale Games as part of a licensing deal with Universal Partnerships and Licensing. The game is set on the fictional island of Isla Nublar, the location of a dinosaur theme park known as Jurassic Park. The game's plot centers on the retrieval of a canister of dinosaur embryos, lost during the events of the film. The game was announced in June 2010, and was initially scheduled for release in April 2011, but was delayed until November. According to Metacritic, the game received mixed or average reviews. <laughs> Gameplay Jurassic Park, the game is a point-and-click adventure game in which the player uses a combination of buttons to progress. The player controls various characters throughout the game, which is played across four portions known as episodes. The game has decision-based objectives as well as quick-time events that affect gameplay as well as how the game's events play out. Topic. Plot Topic. Episode 1, The Intruder Dr. Jerry Harding voiced by John Curry is the chief veterinarian for the Jurassic Park Dinosaur Theme Park, owned by Ingen and located on the island of Isla Nublar. The game begins with Jerry, Sarah Harding's father, showing his teenage daughter Jess voiced by Heather Hudson, Sarah's younger sister, around the park. At this time, Dennis Nedry puts his plan into motion to shut down the park's security and escape with stolen dinosaur embryos, hidden inside a canister of shaving cream. During a tropical storm, Nedry's two contacts, Nima Cruz voiced by Nika Futterman and Miles Chadwick voiced by Jared Emerson Johnson, head into the park after he fails to meet them at the dock. After getting past the deactivated fences, they find Nedry's jeep, and his body. They find the embryo canister as well, but are attacked by a pack of Dilophosaurus before they can use Nedry's jeep to escape. Chadwick is killed, but before the Dilophosaurus can kill Nima, they flee at the sound of unknown dinosaurs with glowing eyes, one of which bites Nima, who leaves the now damaged jeep and Chadwick's body behind and flees through the jungle with the canister and Chadwick's gun. On their way to the dock, Jerry and Jess encounter Nima, who is now delirious from the bite and needs medical attention. They drive to the visitor's center, but are delayed by a juvenile triceratops blocking the road. Jerry and Jess get the dinosaur back into its enclosure, but the alpha female triceratops appears and attacks their jeep, which also attracts the Tyrannosaurus rex. While the dinosaurs fight, the humans hide in a nearby maintenance shed, where they spend the night. Dr. Laura Sorkin, voiced by Susan Cash, a park scientist who became trapped in a field research lab due to the storm destroying the access road, sees Jerry, Jess and Nima on a security feed the next morning, and sends an automated tour vehicle to pick them up. The three reach the abandoned visitor's center, where Jerry speaks with Sorkin through a radio. Sorkin instructs Jerry on how to cure Nima of her ailment using a tranquilizer dart. The T-Rex enters the visitor's center and attempts to attack the humans. Jerry instructs Sorkin to activate the tour vehicle, which lures the T-Rex away. When Nima learns of a rescue team heading to the island, she pulls her gun on the Hardings and tells them there will not be a rescue. Topic. Episode 2, The Cavalry Ingen hires a team of mercenaries to rescue survivors left on Isla Nublar. The team consists of William. Billy Yoder, voiced by Jason Marsden, Oscar Morales, voiced by Carlos Carrasco, and Daniel Danny Cafaro, aka DCAF, and voiced by Ari Rubin. They head to the visitors' center to meet with Bravo Team, their backup unit, but when they try to radio, all they hear is gunfire. Arriving at the site, they find the entire team dead aside for one member, Vargas, who has gone crazy and tries to attack them. After they subdue Vargas, Yoder and Oscar notice a strange wound on Vargas' arm, speculating that a poisonous animal bite caused him to hallucinate and kill his own men. As they examine the building's security recordings hoping to find out what attacked Vargas, they find footage of Nima marching Jerry and Jess out of the building at gunpoint. 
The visitor's center is once again attacked by dinosaurs, which kill Vargas as Oscar and Yoder rush back to their chopper. Meanwhile, Nima, Jerry and Jess take a break while hiking through the woods. Jerry convinces Nima to let him start a fire by claiming the smoke will keep any dinosaurs away, secretly hoping the rescue team will be able to see it. Later, while Jerry distracts Nima with questions about her family, Jess manages to steal a radio and contacts Yoder, but Nima finds out and forces them to keep moving. Yoder's team see the smoke from Jerry's fire, but a pteranodon attacks their helicopter, forcing them to make an emergency landing. While DCAF tries to repair the chopper, Yoder and Oscar head into the jungle to locate their targets. Nima's group reaches a dead end at the Bone Shaker, an unfinished roller coaster built into the side of a cliff, in which a thousand-year-old stone staircase had been destroyed for the coaster's construction. The trio gets the ride operational and attempt to ride it down to the base of the cliff, but as they do so, a pack of Herrerasaurus attacks them. They manage to ward them off, but the coaster cars nearly run off the damaged tracks in the process. Yoder and Oscar locate them and disarm Nima, although she implies that she has met Oscar before. The group returns to the helicopter, but find that DCAF has disappeared. The T-Rex reappears and makes its way towards them, forcing Oscar to fix the chopper himself. They lift off just in time. Dr. Sorkin is the last rescue target, and they head out to the field lab to pick her up. En route, Nima gets into an argument with Oscar, clearly having history with him, but Jerry stops the fight once the group reaches the lab and meets with Dr. Sorkin. However, Sorkin refuses to leave with them, forcing Yoder to convince her by exploiting her desire for Isla Nublar to become a wildlife preserve for the dinosaurs. She finally concedes, but before leaving, she wants to put an experimental cure for the dinosaurs' engineered lysine deficiency into the Parasaurolophus water supply to keep the dinosaur group she has been studying from dying off while she is away. As she, Jerry and Jess do this, Nima tries to hijack the helicopter and escape. Yoder and Oscar stop her, but in the scuffle, a thrown knife damages the controls. Meanwhile, Sorkin's group is attacked by a pack of velociraptors which had recently been shipped to the park from a nearby island known as Site B and subsequently escaped their containment pens. The raptors force the group to take refuge atop the water tower. They spot the helicopter and call for help, only for the chopper to crash into the tower. Topic. Episode 3, The Depths Dr. Sorkin's group escapes the falling water tower by fixing a damaged ladder and fleeing into the maintenance tunnels to escape the raptors. Nima, Yoder and Oscar survive the chopper crash, but all of the mercenaries' weapons are destroyed when the wreckage catches fire. Oscar scouts the area ahead, leaving Yoder to guard the unconscious Nima. Oscar sees the raptors opening the door to the tunnels, and he follows them inside. Meanwhile, Yoder finds the embryo canister in Nima's backpack, and when she regains consciousness, she is forced to make a deal with Yoder to split the profits from the embryo delivery. The T-Rex reappears, forcing them to hide in the tunnels as well, although Yoder is forced to go back out to get the canister after dropping it. Yoder and Nima proceed through the tunnels, but Nima sees glowing eyes in the dark and refuses to continue without a better light source than the red emergency lights. After Yoder powers up the main lights, he and Nima find Oscar and reveal their plan to sell the stolen embryos. Oscar, while hesitant, agrees to go along with it on the condition that he and Yoder complete their original mission to evacuate the other survivors. Meanwhile, Dr. Sorkin reveals to Jerry that she actually put her lysine deficiency cure into the park's main water supply instead of just the holding pens, which will eventually cure all the dinosaurs and eliminate Jurassic Park's lysine contingency entirely. As the two of them argue over the ethical implications of Dr. Sorkin's actions, Jess sneaks away with Sorkin's cigarettes, hoping to have a smoke. A velociraptor attacks her, forcing her to flee back to Jerry and Sorkin, leading the rest of the raptor pack right to them. They fight the dinosaurs off with the help of a forklift until the others arrive, with Oscar driving the raptors away by wounding the pack leader with his knife. Soon after, steam jets begin escaping from the nearby valves. Dr. Sorkin explains that this means that the park's power plant is on the verge of an explosion, and will have to be reset manually before it goes off. Now regrouped, the survivors head to the power plant to reset the main grid. The group work together to get inside the plant, release the built-up steam pressure and reset the system, but in the process trigger a safety protocol that begins sealing the entire plant behind heavy metal blast doors. 
However, the raptors get in just before the doors can fully close, trapping the survivors inside with the dinosaurs. The group heads to the upper level to escape the raptors, but realize that the door controls on their level are burned out, meaning someone will have to go back down to the lower level and use the panel there. Oscar volunteers, and manages to hold off the raptors long enough to reopen the doors before being killed. The rest of the group runs into the boiler room and seal themselves in. Once inside they find the body of a man covered in what looks like a nest. Yoder identifies him as DCAF, alive but paralyzed and brain dead from the same poison that affected Nima and Vargas, with dinosaur eggs laid in his abdomen. Sorkin reveals that she knew the creatures who did this had gotten loose, and Yoder, angry that she withheld this, grabs her and draws his knife, threatening to kill her. Topic. Episode 4, The Survivors At knife point, Sorkin says that the dinosaurs responsible for Decaf's fate were Truden, explaining she had been ordered to destroy them after their poisonous bite had been discovered, but could not bring herself to do it, keeping them alive in the quarantine pens for study instead. As Jerry and Nima try to convince Yoder to let Dr. Sorkin live, Jess discovers a grate leading back into the maintenance tunnels. As they try to open the grate, the Truden pack returns to their nest and attacks. Yoder and Nima struggle to hold them back as the group break open the grate. They flee from the Truden through the tunnels, but the group becomes separated. Jerry and Nima make their way to the surface, but everyone else remains trapped in the tunnels. Jerry tries to go back for Jess and the others, but Nima convinces him they can take care of themselves. During the small break, the two strike up a conversation, with Nima revealing that Isla Nublar was actually the ancestral home of her tribe before Ingen bought it out, forcibly removed the native villagers, and built Jurassic Park. She explains that Oscar was one of the Ingen mercenaries who originally evicted her people from the island, and she took the job of stealing the embryos for revenge, as well as the hope that the money would help her provide a better life for her daughter. A passing and partly damaged tour car apparently the same one that Jerry, Nima, and Jess used to get to the visitor's center gets their attention, and they use it to head for the park's marine exhibit, which they conclude is the other's most likely destination. The two groups reunite at the marine exhibit, where Yoder explains that they all need to get off the island soon, as the U.S. Navy intends to bomb the island on Ingen's behalf to eliminate the threat of potential escaped dinosaurs. Upon hearing this, Dr. Sorkin abandons the group and takes an elevator down to the underwater aquarium, leaving the others stranded topside. The others unlock the elevator and follow her down, where they overhear her on the phone arguing with Ingen over the impending bombing, pretending that the other survivors are her hostages to get the bombing called off and locks off the elevator. When that does not seem to work, she releases the park's captive Tylosaurus into the lagoon, despite Jerry's pleading. The newly freed Mosasaur slams into the side of the facility, knocking Dr. Sorkin into the moon pool and devouring her. Yoder calls his employers and has them delay the bombing, but as the group makes their way back to the elevator he pulls out a grenade he took from Decaf's body, explaining that with his men dead, he only cares about delivering the embryos, and does not want the Hardings slowing him down. He offers to take Nima along, but Nima, disgusted by Yoder's betrayal, refuses. Yoder throws the grenade as he escapes to the surface, which cracks the facility's windows when it goes off, causing water to seep in. As the elevator ascends, however, he realizes that the embryos are gone, stolen by Jess while he was not looking. Jerry and the others seal themselves in the aquarium's control room before the rotunda above floods completely, only to find that the damaged pressure seal on the door is causing the moon pool to slowly flood their room as well. Nima notices that the only way out is through a sea cave in the wall of the lagoon, which she remembers from her childhood, that will take them directly to the surface. Donning scuba gear, the three make their way through the water and into the cave, narrowly avoiding the mosasaur in the process while following some pipes. They eventually reach the surface and head for the docks, where Nima's contacts left a boat waiting after Nedry's failed delivery. They are attacked by Yoder upon their arrival. As Nima and Yoder fight, the T-Rex arrives and devours Yoder. Jerry distracts the T-Rex so the others can escape, but the T-Rex damages the skywalk Nima and Jess are on. As Jess clings to the railing, the canister falls to the ground below. The player is then allowed to choose whether Nima goes to save Jess or the embryos. If the player decides that Nima should save Jess, she pulls her up while the embryo canister is crushed under the T-Rex's foot. Jerry, Jess and Nima escape the island together. 
As they sail off, Nima worries how she will take care of her daughter without the money the embryos would have brought her, but Jess manages to find a large case of money in the boat, presumably the payment she would have received for the embryos, implying that everything will work out in the end. If Nima goes to save the embryos however, she is eaten alive by the T-Rex while Jerry and Jess escape the island on a boat, with the former deciding to return to his old job as a regular zoo veterinarian so that he can be closer to Jess. He also mentions taking care of Nima's daughter, perhaps even adopting her on Nima's behalf. Topic development On June 9, 2010, Telltale Games announced a deal with Universal Partnerships and Licensing to develop a video game based on the Jurassic Park series. Joel Dreskin, the director of marketing for Telltale, said that Universal didn't want another dinosaur shooting game. That's something from their side that interested them in Telltale Games as a partner for the property. Development was already underway at the time of the announcement, at which point there was a possibility of actors from the film series reprising their roles for the game. The game was developed as a direct sequel to the first film. Telltale worked with some of the film's creators to ensure the game would be accurate, and the development team studied the films to recreate their appearance and pacing. Universal gave Telltale a large amount of creative freedom to develop the game. Jerry Harding, who had a minor part in the first film, is the only character from the film to appear in the game, while the others are original characters created by Telltale. The game includes portions of Jurassic Park that were not seen in the film, including tunnels and a marine exhibit. The dinosaur's behavior was based on the behavior of present day animals, as well as dinosaur behavior featured in the Jurassic Park films. A paleontologist also advised the development team on possible dinosaur behavior. The gameplay was heavily influenced by the 2010 video game Heavy Rain. It is the first game by Telltale in which the player's character can be killed. The first images from the game were released in January 2011. Topic: Credits. Topic: Release. When the game was announced, it was to be published shortly after the release of a new Back to the Future video game, which was scheduled to go on sale in winter 2010. The game was to be published for Microsoft Windows, Macintosh, and unspecified home video game consoles. The game's title and a trailer were unveiled in February 2011, with a planned release date of April 2011 for the first of several downloadable episodes. On April 26, 2011, Telltale announced that the game would be delayed until fall 2011. Telltale co founder Dan Connors said, The game's mechanics and storytelling have come together in such a way that we see great potential, so much so that we feel we can push these elements to the next level if we spend some extra time working on them. People who pre-ordered the game were given a refund and the choice of a free Telltale game. Two days later, Telltale specified the home game consoles on which the game would be released, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 version would be released as a physical disc with all episodes, while the game would be released as individual downloadable episodes for the other platforms. The game was shown at the Electronic Entertainment Expo in June 2011. In August 2011, a release date of November 15, 2011 was planned for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and computer versions, while a release date for an iPad 2 version of the game was still undetermined. In the United States, the game was released as scheduled, although the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions were delayed in Europe. All episodes for the European PC and Mac versions were released as planned, and the first episode was released that month for iPad. The European PlayStation 3 version launched on the PlayStation Network in December 2011, with no reason given for the delay. The European Xbox 360 version was delayed as Telltale did not have a publishing office in Europe. Telltale had self published the console's American version. Telltale announced that Calypso Media would publish the Xbox 360 game in early 2012 in Europe, the Middle East and Africa, where Calypso would also publish the Microsoft Windows version in a retail form rather than its downloadable form. In January 2012, Calypso announced that it would no longer release a boxed retail version of the Xbox 360 game in the United Kingdom, which would only receive a retail PC version scheduled for release on February 24, 2012. Reception 
Jurassic Park, the game received mixed or average reviews. According to aggregating review website Metacritic, IGN's Greg Miller said of the game, Jurassic Park is a meandering tale of forgettable characters getting lost in a park that is far less wondrous than the one we saw on the silver screen. Caroline Petit from GameSpot stated that while it was fun to watch Jurassic Park's story play out, the cinematic adventure wasn't much fun to actually play. While she praised the use of the source material, she criticized the lack of challenging puzzles and lack of context for conversation options. She concluded her review comparing the game progression to the cars on rigid tracks, offering no control where it goes or how it gets there. You're just along for the ride. However, Richard Cobbett of PC Gamer gave the game an unfavorable review, calling the game a barely interactive movie that asks nothing of you but the most basic of motor functions. Taking issue with the gameplay taking a back seat to the plot, which he described as a hammy but watchable sequel to the first movie. Development staff at Telltale Games wrote favorable user reviews for the game on Metacritic without disclosing their affiliation to the game. In the United States, Jurassic Park, the game was the sixth best-selling PlayStation Network game for November 2011. In 2015, Eurogamer stated that the game's material would have worked better for a film, stating that the story was a great sequel to the film but that it was embodied in a sub-par game.